Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to Beginnings Church Makati's online worship service. We are so happy that you can join us today. You know, this might be a slightly different platform, but our message remains the same. We are here to win people, make disciples, build leaders, and reach the nations for Jesus. We are here to conquer the cities for Jesus. You know, it is during a time like this that we can be grateful that the scriptures remind us that the church is not limited by a church building or a facility. You know, we are not even limited by our geographic location, but the church is the people of God all over this country and all around the world that are living lives that bring glory and honor to his name. Jesus reminds us in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, that where two or three gather together in his name, he is there in their midst. So we encourage you, gather your family members, you know, post this on your social media site so that, you know, the people in your newsfeed might be able to get connected to God's message, God's word for them today. You know, everybody needs Jesus, especially at a time like this. Let's prepare our hearts, you know, to make a joyful noise unto the Lord this beautiful Sunday morning. Let's praise and worship His name, being reminded of who He is, that He is still on the throne, that He is sovereign, and He is in control. And after that, let's also prepare our hearts to hear the message of God from our senior pastor, Pastor Dennis Hefner. So, let's praise and worship the Lord together. God bless you. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. And you know what? Every day is a good day to praise the Lord. Amen? So if you're ready, here we go. This current is trying to wreck me Like castles of sand, castles of sand My fear like an enemy army is marching again, but I'm making a stand. You surround me and never resign. Your love is my armor. I fear no evil. Darkness runs from your light. So I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid. You're going before me. And oceans are parting. You're fighting my battle. Weakness, you are strong. Every 
the trouble you have overcome in my weakness you are strong and the trouble you have overcome you have overcome you're going before me and notions are parting you're fighting my battles when my feet are failing
God And though we'll see how great How great Regardless of our situation right now, our circumstances, Lord, what we see, what we feel, Lord, still, God, it doesn't change the fact that you are good, you are able, you are strong, you are faithful. Therefore, we will trust you, God. So, Father, we thank you for this time. We bless you. We worship you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're sitting there right now. Can you say this with me? God is good. God is faithful. That's because He truly is. So right now, let us prepare our hearts, you know, to receive the Word of God. And God bless you as you listen today. In Jesus' name, amen. Shalom, shalom. Greetings in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to Beginnings Church Online Worship Service. Ito po yung Taglish Edition. Ang current na community quarantine sa Metro Manila uh, keeps us from meeting together doon sa uh, places of worship natin in a physical manner. But because of that, God has opened a very amazing way na ang mga anak niya and others can still worship Him and listen to the Word. Wow! God has opened a door para lalo po siyang mapuri, no? uh, lalo siyang may taas at lalong mapalakas sa mga anak ng Panginoon. Uh, alam po ba ninyo that you know, as, of, uh, as of today, uh, over 9,000 views na po ang you know, uh, naka, nag-click o kaya nanood doon sa nakaraang online worship service natin. At not only that, the even more exciting thing, yung church po has been uh, meeting up sa mga small groups po, online, online prayer groups. Can you imagine that? Something that we have never done before is happening now because of what, what has recently happened. So initially we thought, Wow, ano na ang mangyayari na hindi tayo mag meet But the Lord has shown that nothing could stop Him. So, today we, you know, we we come together in obedience to the Lord's command. Sabi ng Painon, huwag ninyong pabayaan ang pagkakatipon na gaya ng ugali ng iba, kundi kayo'y magpalakasan sa isa't isa at lalong-lalo na ng inyong namamalas na nalalapit na ang araw. So, welcome to Beginnings Church online worship service. May God bless us all today as we worship Him. God's word today is about protection, His protection in crisis. I'd like to read to you Psalm chapter 91 para makita natin ang sinasabi ng Panginoon about Christ, about His protection. There is a problem about how people understand God's protection that if it is not corrected, it will keep us from resting in Jesus. It will steal away our peace and our joy in Jesus. Until we understand how God truly protects us, we will be shaken uh, with every trial. Every bad news will 
really hit us hard, we would not be trained to persevere and mature into Christ's likeness. We would be unable to praise God in times of storm. Hindi natin mapupuri ang Panginoon sa gitna ng ating mga storms. So I pray that as we look into the word today, that uh, this word will truly transform us. Ito na po ang Psalm chapter 91 in English. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely, He will save you from the fuller's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your sight, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with the eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For He will <coughs> command His angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. So they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because He loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Uh, this is God's word for us today. Uh, there are three things I want to share with you this uh today, tatlong bagay po. Ang una, dito sa unang verses, unang apat na verses of Psalm 91, we we see the promises. Merong sinasabi ang Panginoon dito. Napakagandang promise ng Panginoon. Yung middle part po ng Psalm 91, uh, this is the, the, the place where parang hindi gaanong Naintindihan ng mga tao. I think this is where the the, the promise uh, that God has made is being misunderstood. And this is the place where we need uh, the correction. At yung sa dulo po ng Psalm 91 ay pinapakita sa atin kung paano po natin ma-experience yung mga pangako ng Panginoon. So, three things po. Ano po yung, again, the first part is that God is showing us yung incredible na promise niya. Yung second part, it's the promise that needs to be understood. The promise where our eyes, our ears, our hearts need to be opened by the Lord so that we truly understand what is being promised. Yung, yung dulo po, I'll be sharing with you po kung paano natin may experience itong peace na ito, itong pangako ng Panginoon, itong protection na ito ng ating Panginoon. So, let's look at the plain promise. Uh, dito po sa text natin, makikita natin ano, that ang, ang Diyos, He is likened to a shelter. Para daw siyang silungan. He is likened to a to a shade. You know, everywhere you go, may mga shade, no? Dito sa Philippines, uh, there are there are shades. Uh, ang shade, uh, you need that, right? You need that, uh, Kapag ka rainy, rainy day, you need a shade. Pag ka sunny day, you need a shade. At sana no, kung may aircon pa yung mga shades na yun, it would be so good. Uh, also, God is likened to a shadow. Parang lilim na lilim. No? A shade from the sun uh, in a hot, terrible climate. Kapag ka doon sa, sa lugar na may init, ang ang araw pagka you know pagka mainit talaga pumapatay 
ang araw na yan. And that's why it is so important that, that this uh, song is talking about God as the protector. And then, don't post uh, verse 4. He says, He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. This is an amazing description ng Panginoon. Ano? Sabi niya, lulukuban ka niya sa lilim na kanyang malapad na pakpak. I like that. Malapad na pakpak. At sa kalinga niya ay palagi kanyang nakakatiyak. Iingatan niya at ipagsasanggalang pagkat siya ay matapat. Ito po ang daming images about God and lahat po ng mga images na ito ay para sa protection ng Panginoon. Ito pong, uh, ito pong larawan ng, ng bird no? na naka-spread yung kanyang wings. Uh, ito po ay napakagandang picture kung paano protect ng Diyos ang kanyang mga anak. Yung mother bird po, uh, ini-spread niya yung kanyang wings Para kapag ka umuulan, yung, yung mga youngs niya, eh, hindi sila, you know, nababasa. Pagka mainit, hindi rin sila tinutunaw ng apoy. At saka kapag ka merong predator, merong kaaway, may kalaban, may, may magtatangkang dadagit sa kanyang mga, sa kanyang mga chicks, no? sa kanyang mga... Mga anak, uh, the, the mother hen, the mother bird spreads yung kanyang wings uh, because uh, sinasabi ng, ng bird na ito na you cannot touch my, my young. Alam niyo sa Bible, God is likened like, like this in many, many places. One of the first places na makikita natin ito uh, is in Ruth, no? chapter 2, ng si Boaz. Sinabi niya kay Ruth, nung nalaman niya na si Ruth uh, left yung, yung bayan niya, yung familia niya uh, para sumama kay, kay Ruth, ay uh, kay Naomi kasi si uh, Naomi uh, matanda na and she wants to care, care for her and it appears na itong si Ruth uh, really has embraced the, the fate, no? the fate ng kanyang mother-in-law. That when Boaz saw, uh, met her, sinabi niya sa kanya, sinabi niya, May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Sa mga pakpak ng Panginoon, ikaw ay nagpas sa ilalim. Doon sa Psalm 36 verse 7, the same truth is uh, mentioned. Lahat ng tao daw ay sumisilong doon sa kanya mga pakpak. Psalm 57, in you my soul take refuge. And sabi niya, I will take refuge, uh, I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster is past. And then of course, Psalm 61 verse 3, I long to dwell in your tent, yung toldomo, forever and take refuge in the shadow of your wings. So, ano po ba ang, ano, ano po ba ang pangako dito? Ang pangako ng Panginoon ay ito. Kapag ka ikaw ay anak ng Diyos. Kapag ka ikaw ay nagtitiwala sa Kanya. Kapag ka ikaw ay sumusunod sa Panginoon. Ang pangako ng Panginoon ay you know, iingatan Kanya. If you have entered into a covenant relationship with God, the promise is He will protect you. There it is. That's the promise. If you trust in God, he will protect you. Uh, secondly po, let, let's look at the misunderstanding of the promise. Doon po sa gitna, from verses 5 hanggang verses uh, uh, 13, makikita natin yung mga, mga pangako ng Panginoon. And to summarize it, let me just share this. When you read this passage, parang ang pangako ng Panginoon ay una sa lahat, he will, uh, if you trust in God, you will not experience violence. Pagka natiwala ka sa Panginoon, walang masama, walang pahirap, walang violenting 
mangyayari para sa iyo. You know, yung, yung promise niya na the terror of night, the arrows that flies by day, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Diba parang sinasabi niya na, yeah, mamatay na lahat. No, maapekto na lahat. Tatamaan ng lahat, pero kung ikaw ay nagtitiwala sa Diyos, never, never. Parang yun yung parang una pangako ng Panginoon, no? And actually, it's a misunderstanding. Yung, yung sa verse 6, tina po yung verse 6. So, una, uh, God seems, no? Parang parang sinasabi ng Panginoon na kapag ka nagtitiwala ka sa Kanya, hindi ka na magdurusa ng violence mula sa kamay ng iba. Yung, yung sa verse 6, eh parang you won't experience disease or sickness. Tino mo, sabi niya, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. Doon sa verse 10, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near you. No harm, no disaster, no violence, no sickness. And then, tingnan po niyo ito sa verse 12. It even says that you won't stub your, your toe. Hindi masasaktan ang mga paa mo. Kahit ano pa mangyari, kahit bumagsak ka, hindi ka masasaktan. Can you imagine that? Uh, because ang sinasabi niya, the angels, yung mga workers ng God, or yung power ni God, they will lift up, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And of course, we can include dito yung sinasabi ng marami na kapag ka nagtitiwala ka sa Panginoon, yung COVID-19 will never touch you. The other, a few days ago, nakita ko po ito, no? there was a beautiful picture of uh, parang si Daniel na inihulog siya doon sa yungib ng mga leon. At yung caption na nakalagay ay katulad ni Daniel, pagka nagtitiwala ka sa Panginoon, hindi hindi ka tatamaan ng COVID-19. Uh, kaya, totoo kaya ito? Ito ba kaya ay pinangako ng Panginoon? Now, let me give you three reasons kung bakit hindi tama po ang pangunawa na ito. Ang una po, nakikita natin sa desperation natin. Parang sa kabila ng sinasabi ng salita ng Panginoon from other passages na that child of God may experience pain and suffering and even death. I think a lot of Christians, they, they want it to work it this way and the fact na we want it to work it this way, parang I think it's a cause for for us to pause for a while and ask ourselves, am I being logical? Uh, am I being balanced in my understanding of the scripture? But the second and even more important reason is there's a there's a long book in the Bible called the book of Job. Remember si Job po? Job was a righteous person. God himself, sinabi niya, this, this son of mine, I'm so proud of him. He is righteous. And, and of course, uh, during those times, um, you know, ang tingin ng mga tao, pagka righteous ka, pagka may faith ka kay God, eh dapat hindi ka mag-suffer. And that's why, you know, uh, his three friends, yung kanyang mga kaibigan, remember the the very special friends of Job, they were coming to him and they were telling him, Job, hindi ka mag, maghihirap, hindi ka mawawalan, hindi ka mag-suffer ng sakit kapag ka yung favor ni God ay nasa iyo. Pagka love ka ni God, hindi ka magsasuffer ng, you know, ng karamdaman. So, you know, uh, but Job insisted, no, I haven't done anything wrong. I mean, show me. Uh, maglabas kayo ng prueba na ako ay nagkasala sa Panginoon. And of course, you know that in the end, you know, when God would finally speak, sabi ng God sa three friends ni Job, Job, uh, kayo, kayong tatlo, sabi, humingi kayo ng patawad at humingi, humingi kayo kay Job ng prayer so that, you know, so that, uh, uh, you would be forgiven and be blessed by God. 
Because God said, sabi ng Panginoon doon sa sa Job 42 verse 7, sabi ng God sa kanila, You have not spoken truth about me. Yung kanilang insistence, yung kanilang sinasabi kay Job na Job, pagka you are right with God, no disaster will ever come to you. No sickness will ever come to you. You will never lose anything. And, and, and look, you know, lahat, lahat, lahat ng mga disasters ay nangyari sa buhay niya. And yet, God gave us the whole book of Job para ipakita sa atin that life does not always work that way. There are, there are events in our lives when God allows certain things to happen to His people and for a purpose. And we're going to be looking at that. And I think there's there's another passage uh, that, that I want to point out to you uh, or another reason and that is ito po, Satan wants you to interpret Psalm 91 that way. Gusto, ng, gusto ni Satanas, gusto ng kaaway na ang pananaw mo sa Psalm 91 ay pag ako may tiwala kay God, wala kailanman maaring mangyaring masama sa akin. He wants you to see the verse that way and for a purpose. <sighs> Alam niyo ba na of all the verses na kinote ni ni Satan kay Christ doon sa temptation niya. Do you remember sa sa Luke chapter 4 verse 10 and 11 or kaya sa Matthew chapter 4 Nung tinitet niya si Christ, sabi niya, lumuntag ka na dyan, pakita mo kung ikaw ay anak ng Diyos. O kaya sabi niya, dahil ikaw ay anak ng Diyos, dahil ikaw ay mahal ng Diyos, makit ka doon sa mataas na gusali at you know, magpatihulog ka. At uh, ikaw ay sasaluhin ng mga anghel. Hindi kailanman masasaktan ang mga ang mga ang paamo ang mga daliri ng paamo <laughs> wow bakit kaya no well, why is satan so insistent na dapat ang pangunawa natin sa Psalm 91 ay kapag ka ako ay anak ng Diyos pagka ako may tiwala sa Panginoon walang maaring masama na mangyayari sa akin well ano po ang mangyayari kasi kapag ka, if you misunderstand Psalm 91 when bad things happen and they and they will happen when terrible things happen and they will happen when you know when calamities happen and they will happen uh, very likely po you will begin to doubt God you will begin to you know, yung, yung faith mo, yung pagtitiwala mo kay God. Ay sinabi ng God na pagkaanak ako niya, wala maaaring masamang mangyari sa akin. Pagka nagtitiwala ako sa kanya, uh, wala, everything would be smooth and good. But now, bad things are happening. So, maybe God cannot be trusted. And of course, with, with lack of faith, will come disappointment. A lot of people are really disappointed. I've met a lot of Christians na talagang disappointed sa buhay because they misinterpreted the promises of God. They misunderstood what God said. And when bad things happen to them, wow, they are really disappointed and they start withdrawing from God. And if you grow older with this, with this kind of theology, still believing yung misunderstood promise, well, you will be one of those who are angry and bitter. Kaya pala ganun na lang, no? Ganun na lang ang, ang gusto ng kaaway na ma-misunderstand natin ang passage na ito. So, what does it mean that God protects us? But let me, let me share with you uh, one story. Yung story ni Joseph. Remember si Joseph. Si Joseph was was the dreamer, right? And dami niyang, dami niyang mga dreams, no? Uh, alam natin, si Joseph ay isa sa mga anak ni Jacob. At uh, the, the, one of the problems, uh, the, the way that Jacob una, yung, yung dysfunctional family ni Jacob, nung nagka-pamilya siya, dysfunctional din ang kanyang pamilya. 
Kaya na kailangan ng mga magulang ang bawat isa sa atin who grew up in a dysfunctional family that we would be healed, that we would be, you know, that we would uh, learn yung mga pagkakamali and then that we would not grow up being spoiled. Uh, you know, so, so itong si Joseph was being spoiled, di ba? Nung nagbibinatilyo na siya, wow, he, he was this mayabang, malaki ang ulo, akala niya ay luluhod sa kanya ang lahat. And because of that, ang kanyang mga kapatid ay talagang gusto na siyang patayin. Well, alam natin na the, he ended up being sold as a slave in Egypt. And then in Egypt, wow, for decades, no? We don't know exactly for how long, pero mukhang mahigit sa sampung taon <laughs> o mahigit pa na ang buhay niya ay one tragedy after another tragedy, one injustice to another injustice. And it appears na during those times, uh, when, when he called on God, parang wala man lang sagot ang Panginoon sa kanya. So, you know, ano po ang <laughs> ano po ang nangyari sa kanya? Well, because God allowed the sufferings, the injustices, because God allows allowed those things to happen to him, wow, he became a great man. Naging dakilang lalaki itong si Joseph. Joseph would never have become a great man without those tragedies and disasters that have happened into him. And the second one, yung mga kapatid niya. You know, secondly, the brothers would never have been humbled and healed psychologically. And of course, thirdly, wow, yung, yung mundo during those times. You know, those things happened kay Joseph because God would use him to be to save the world. Alam niyo si Joseph po is so much like Jesus rejected to become the savior of the world. So, ano po yung how, how does God protect us? Paano po tayo pino-protect ng ating Panginoon? Well, makikita natin sa sinabi ni Joseph doon sa sa Genesis 50, uh, sabi niya sa mga kapatid niya, you meant to hurt me. You meant to you know, destroy me. You meant for evil, but sabi niya, God meant it for good. Kaya nga yung mga tragedies, there is something that God can do that would be better because of what has happened. And of course, the other scripture is, what about Romans 8 verse 28? Yeah, we, we know that verse, right? Sabi sa Romans 8 28, uh, you know, that, that all things work together for good. Huh? God works in everything so that all things will turn to, to our good, to the good, to the good that God has planned for our lives. So, ito po, no? talagang ang makikita natin, why disasters, why yung protection ni God is different. No? He allows tragedies, He allows pain, He allows suffering because God wants to bring out the best in us. And another scripture, and this, for me, this is the most important scripture that helps us to understand correctly yung pangako ng Psalm 91. And that verse is Luke 21, verse 16 to 18. Sabi, sabi ni Jesus po dito sa verse na ito, uh, let, 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 me, let me read to you sa, yun sa Tagalog. Ano. Luke chapter... Uh, chapter 21 Sabi po dito Tinan po niyo uh, Verse 16 Ipagkakanulo kayo ng inyong mga magulang Mga kapatid, mga kamag-anak At mga kaibigan At ipapapatay nila ang ilan sa inyo Look at that Jesus himself was talking to his disciples he was, he was telling them, you will be betrayed your, your, by, by your parents, by your, by, sa mga kapatid ninyo, by your relatives, and by your friends. And then some of you would be killed. And then verse 17, kapupuotan kayo ng lahat dahil sa pagsunod sa akin. 
Ngunit hindi kayo malalagasan kahit isang hibla ng buhok. Can you imagine that? At ito po, the best part, verse 19, sa inyong pagtitiis ay maliligtas ang inyong buhay. Now, please, ang verse na ito, uh, hindi niya itinuturo sa atin. Kapag ka magtiis ka, maliligtas ka. Alam po natin, we are not saved by pagtitiis. Tayo po ay naligtas sa pamamagitan ng biyaya ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Ang tinatalakay po dito ay yung, yung miraculous power of, of persecutions, of difficulties, of hardships, uh, of the problems and the troubles that God allows us to go through. Kasi alam po ninyo, uh, when, when problems come, one of the things that it does to us, they do to us, I they they help us sift through life. At nakikita natin yung mahalaga at yung hindi mahalaga. Yung mga bagay we can live with and the, the things we can live without. Kaya nga, kapag ka, may sakit ka, mamamatay ka, you know, I mean, if you need to sell your house, you would sell your house. If you need to give up everything for the sake of, you know, of, of being treated, you will do that because life is so important. And in the same manner po, ang sinasabi ng Panginoon dito, that the reason why why God allows tragedies, uh, COVID-19 to happen, things like this to happen, is because God wants us to realize na siya at siya lang ang ating yaman. Na siya at siya lang ang ating pag-asa. Na siya at siya lang ang ating buhay. Kaya nga po, kailangang maalis. <laughs> Minsan po, masyado nating pinapahalagahan ang maraming bagay. Kaya tayo po ay nawawala sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. So, let, let me close today by by sharing with you paano po natin ma-experience ang pangako na ito ng Panginoon. Uh, you know, dito po sa, at sa verse na ito, look, look at verse 15. Verse 15, this is the most important verse dito. In verse 15, nakikita natin how we enter into the promise. Sabi niya sa verse 15, I will be with him in trouble. I will be with him in trouble. Look at look at that. Well, napansin niyo ba? God says, sasamahan ko siya doon sa trouble. Wow, hindi niya sinabi na, you know, ililigtas ko siya doon sa trouble. Na I will make sure he's exempted from the trouble. God, God is saying something different here. Kasi... You know, parang pagka, if, if you look at this verse, then kapag ang pangako ni Lord ay i-exempt kita sa trouble, and then here in verse 15, God is saying, I will be with you in trouble, then, wow, then it's, it's something, it's different, right? Parang ang, ang, sinasa, ang sinasabi ng Painong dito ay, sasamahan kita sa panahon ng inyong, ng inyong paghihirap. Now, what does that mean? Now, I think it means more than yung presence ni God. Because we know from Scripture na ang pagparito ng Panginoon ay masigit pa kaysa pagsama niya sa atin. Alam natin ang doctrine of the incarnation, yung panahon ng Pasko, na ang Diyos ay nagtatawang tao at pumunta siya dito. Nagbagong anyo siya para samahan niya tayo sa ating mga paghihirap. So, that's the first thing we need to understand na kapag ka tayo po ay naghihirap, kapag ka may mga problema tayong hinaharap, the, the first comforting thing na sa sa atin ay, oh, mahirap tong aking hinaharap, pero mas mahirap pa pinagdaanan ng ating, ng ating Panginoong Yesus. At kung uh, nagawa niya ito, Akin ding magagawa ito sa pamamagitan ng ating, ng aking Panginoon. But the second one, so the first one is through the incarnation. But then the second one is through substitution. Remember kanina po, God likened Himself sa isang, sa isang, uh, yung, sa isang bird na, you know, na, naka, you know, you, spread yung kanyang wings. It's the picture of a mother hen. 
mother bird, an eagle mother or a mother hen, na yung, yung mga anak niya ay nasa ilalim niya. So, how does the mother hen protect yung kanyang mga chicks from from the from the rain? Well, alam natin, the mother hen gets wet. How does the mother hen protect the, the chicks from the sun? Well, we know that he takes the heat so that yung kanyang mga anak eh makakaroon ng sino. But how does the mother hen takes on the predator? Well, he could try to fight the predator, but if the predator is much powerful and stronger kaysa sa kanya, then the, the mother hen protects the young by being eaten by the predator. Alam po ninyo, that is what Jesus has done for us. Nakita ng Panginoon ang ating rebellion, nakita niya ang ating makasalanan, nakita niya ang ating mga pagkukulang. And yet, God decided, sabi ng Panginoon, kahit ganon sila, kahit mahihina sila, kahit hindi sila, kahit mga suwail sila, kahit sila ay hindi maaasahan, I'm going to go down and I'm going to become like them, become a human person, then I am going, I'm going to substitute for them. And that's why on the cross, Jesus took your place and mine so that He can give us life. You know, we need to go back to understanding what is this protection? Why does God allow disasters? Well, as we said, because it is only as we put our trust in the Lord when disasters come. When we say, Lord, no matter what happens, I will trust you. That we begin to unload. We begin to be cleaned. We begin to be able to throw away the non-essentials because God wants that we value Him, that we understand, that we trust Him, that we love Him above, above everything else. And that's why po, mga minamahal, Jesus has come in order to show this to us. I pray that this message uh, will bless you. I pray that God will, will touch your heart. I pray that we will look at what's happening around us with a different perspective. Let us pray po. Panginoon, salamat po sa pagkakataon na binigay niyo sa amin para kami ay makinig ng yung salita. Lord, I pray today that you would help us, Lord, to look at the things happening around us, Lord, with a different perspective, to understand that you have come. You have entered our troubles. You have come. You have substituted for us. And Lord, as we look at you, as we look at your love, your suffering, at your power, we know we can make it with you. So Lord, I pray that you bless your people, strengthen their faith, strengthen their love for you, strengthen their resolve to love you above all things, Lord. Help us, Lord, to turn away from everything that omits you, from everything, Lord, that makes you second, because we want you to be first into our lives. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.